the South China Sea to the Pacific Ocean, fragments of land form more than 7,000 islands in the Philippines archipelago. A third of 94 million Filipinos live below the poverty line. Only two out of ten households have a basic savings account. As a financial regulator, we have worked to develop regulations that create space for uh, innovation by the private sector to uh, develop new products that cater to the requirements of the poor. It's a three-hour boat ride in the shadow of Mount Mayon Volcano from Legazpi Port to Rapu Rapu. There are just two passenger boats a day. Errol Asuncion left before five this morning to make his weekly trip to buy supplies for his grocery store on this remote island. Electricity is turned on at noon on Rapu Rapu for just 12 hours a day, but a new cell phone tower went up last year, so mobile phones are a key infrastructure connecting islanders to the rest of the Philippines. While banking reach is not as extensive, most people have mobile phones, and that is an opportunity. With the environment that has allowed electronic money and mobile banking, you're literally putting an access point to financial services in everyone's pocket, spurring the level of economic activity in this remote island. Tell me when will you be mine? Tell me quando, quando, quando. More than 50 kilometers from uh, Ligaspi. There is no uh, near bank here. Boya Sonsion is the number one Gcash dealer in Rapu Rapu. Number one on the island means the first and only dealer for the e-money service so far. Since regulation opened up to allow electronic money, agents like Errol's Superstore act as cash-in, cash-out points, allowing his customers to pay bills and send and receive remittances through the mobile phone. Christopher Arido is a tricycle driver and he sells noodles and biscuits to stores throughout the town. Before Gcash, he had to travel several hours by boat to Ligao to pay his suppliers. Before I had to go to Ligao, my transportation was expensive. Now that Gcash is in Rapu Rapu, the service is okay. Yolanda Benaina's husband, Vicente, moved to Manila 10 years ago to work as a security guard in a printing factory. My husband sends money twice a month on the 15th and 30th and I receive it by Gcash. Vicente comes home to visit Yolanda and his five kids just twice a year. These domestic remittances from relatives who moved to the cities to get work are a critical lifeline for families living in the provinces. Because they are transacting in e-money, which is clearly not a savings account, then we can be more proportionate in our approach, thereby allowing more access points to be developed across the country. This is the important first step. Here in Manila, it's not only domestic remittances. The Philippines is one of the top recipients of international remittances from overseas foreign workers, making up at least 10% of GDP. The remittance services is a good entry point. This kind of system can readily be connected with banks, where they will be subject to the normal prudential regulations. New regulations have opened up the opportunity for local outlets like this drugstore in Quezon City to become banking agents, offering access to a full range of services geared toward low-income savers and backed by a bank. They live in the area, they buy their local medicine, there, there's a doctor here. So now they can do all of those things and have access to financial products and services. Banco is the first mobile bank in the Philippines, a partnership between the oldest bank and one of the leading telcos. Outsourced Know Your Customer or KYC rules allow trained agents to verify the identity of people opening new accounts. Because of technology, mobile banking and regulation, all of these people now are opening wallets. We now do the KYC and the IDs. And then we, when we approve the account, it becomes a bank account. In the Philippines, where we don't have a national ID, it's often a problem for people to get access to a bank account. Because of the support of central bank and the regulations, we are now able to process the accounts using a barangay certificate. It's like uh, your local leader in the community certifying that Marjorie Henson is a legal resident of this barangay. If you don't have another ID to present, the barangay certificate is okay. Barangay clearance, Leopoldo Macha runs a fruit store in Galas Market just across the road. Actually, I want to save 
uh, money and uh, for my health and for my family. Today he's opening an account and discovering all the benefits. So, while I'm maintaining balance, we bring life insurance. They automatically get micro insurance, which is a very big deal here in the Philippines. The poor actually need a range of financial services, but they have to be properly designed for this market. Now we're trying to see how usage can be further expanded. About a third of Manila's 12 million residents live in slums. Here in Pasig Floodway, it's clear that this is an opportunity that could have a profound impact. Our financial inclusion efforts that are now bringing more people that were previously not in the formal financial system are actually something that can contribute to ensuring financial integrity in the system. We just have to be open and flexible to innovations. It's a two-speed economy. For a central bank to be relevant in such kind of environment, we needed to connect our work to the important objective of including people into the financial system. The signals coming from standard setters helps us a lot. Having regulations that can be seen to be aligned with international standards creates legitimacy because you put in place safeguards. So it's always a, a balancing act, being able to reach out, but at the same time doing so in a responsible manner.